So mindset's everything. Mindset's super important. If you don't have your mindset right, you're not going to have anything else right in your mm-hmm. life, fitness related or not fitness related. So what I have them do is to keep themselves motivated and actually get right into the routine a lot easier, especially if they feel like they're wanting to quit when they're already just trying to get into it. I would recommend them doing this, just remembering why they started to begin with. So remembering why you started the journey, that's everything. Like that is huge. When you actually pinpoint your why in anything in life, but especially in your fitness journey, that's going to make it a lot easier and basically impossible to want to quit. And then also I found very effectively this, uh, I found what is also very effective is when you can actually analyze what's going to happen if I don't do this, what's going to happen if I don't work towards losing the 20, maybe the 40 or 50 pounds, what, what's going to happen to my health? Papaya! Hello all and welcome to another episode of Transform Your Future with me, Eddie Eisen, where I sit down with entrepreneurs, thought leaders, and high achievers as they identify areas I can improve on and guide me to further my self-improvement practice. For more information and insights, join my newsletter at transformyourfuture.com where I write about reinvention, personal growth, and entrepreneurship. If you like the show, you'll love the content on my site. We want to hear from you. Let us know how we can improve your listening and viewing experience. Suggest upcoming topics or a great guest you know for the show. Please reach out to us through our website, your podcast app, comment, or just text me directly at 813-722-1417. We want to hear from you. Today, we're diving into a topic that's essential to achieving any long-term fitness or health goal, your mindset. We all know that starting a fitness journey is the easy part. You set big goals, feel motivated, put on the theme to Rocky, and begin with enthusiasm. But what happens when life throws challenges at you? How do you stay committed when motivation fades or when progress slows? That's where mindset becomes the true game changer. In today's episode, we're talking with fitness expert Roman Fisher. He is a high-performance coach who's helped countless people transform not just their bodies, but also their relationship with health and fitness. Roman will share his own story of overcoming struggles, breaking through sugar addiction, and creating a sustainable, balanced lifestyle that keeps him motivated even on the toughest days. We'll explore how your mental approach can make or break your success and Roman's practical tips for building consistency and discipline in your fitness routine. Whether you're just starting out or have hit a plateau, today's discussion will help you refocus, break through barriers, and find the mental toughness needed for long-term health success. Roman's journey proves that it's not just about perfection, it's about progress and keeping your eye on the bigger picture. We'll break down actionable steps that you can implement right away from creating small daily habits to redefining your relationship with food, fitness, and yourself. So if you're ready to unlock the secret to lasting fitness success, grab a notebook and get ready to transform your mindset with Transform Your Future today. Welcome to Transform Your Future podcast. How are you doing today, Roman? Pretty good, pretty good. How about you? I am doing well. I am doing well. I'm in the middle of... uh, a lot of new things that I'm that I'm involved in and my schedule has completely changed and I'm waking up hungry and going to bed tired, bro. So <laughs> I I, I'm, like- I'm crushing it every day. I'm crushing it every day. So, uh, you know, I, 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 I wanted to talk to you. I want to talk a little bit about fitness and health. And, you know, I have physical issues that, that I deal with on a daily basis. And right now, one of my goals in life is to figure out how to better manage that part of my life because sometimes it is very annoying uh you know my my physical problem um and you know just overall health and well-being and activity and all that kind of stuff so let's kind of just jump in so uh, you know we've been texting back and forth i have a lot of information you know that i know about you and you know about me uh but let me just uh, open up the floor here why don't you give us a little bit of a background 
what you were doing before, how you ended up uh, here doing what you're doing, and you know what drives you in all of that. Yeah, great questions. So where I was initially in my life back then, I was not at all a fitness fanatic or a fitness junkie like a lot of people like to say. Mm -hmm. I honestly back then never really even cared about fitness. To be honest, the only thing I did when I was back in school that I ever did that was even remotely, you know, sports or fitness related was playing soccer throughout, mm. you know, school, a little bit in high school and then a little bit when I was in elementary. But really beyond that, I didn't really pay too much mind or attention to what I was mm. eating, what I was drinking, and you know, how much activity I was doing throughout the day. I just kind of did whatever, but honestly, I was more of that kid that would go to school, you know, go to school, do what I would have to do there and then come home and uh, just get on the couch and play video games. <laughs> I was more just a video game junkie, if anything. So yeah, that's where I was initially. I just did not care what I ate. I would literally eat anything in front of me. I would drink anything in front of me. If, if it was there, I would eat it. If it was there, I would drink it. So yeah, that was definitely not, not good for my health, <laughs> looking back on it in hindsight. But I will say this, what did get me into fitness, because growing up as a kid, I was very skinny. I was a very skinny kid. And so when my brother, my younger brother, funny enough, when he started working out and when he started weightlifting, I started seeing the changes, obviously not right away, but I'd say over the course of you know two or three months, I started seeing that change on his body and also the energy you know, change. He went from being not so energetic to a lot more energetic, a lot more mm -hmm. focused, a lot more concentrated on anything that he was focused on. And then his body too, the, the changes, the development, the increase in his strength and his muscle, and just seeing that transformation, I saw the confidence boost too in him. And so when I started seeing that, I'm like, man, I gotta, I can't let him beat me. I gotta also, I gotta get into fitness now and I gotta change my life. And I wanna transform my you know inner self and my outer self. And so that's what got me into the, physical realm or the, you know, exercise part of fitness. Now, beyond that though, I wasn't really too, I wouldn't say I was really too um, careful about my diet. I, w I would still eat anything and drink anything at that point, but I was at least getting my physical, you know, regimen in check with exercise. But what did get me from not caring about what I would eat or drink to actually caring more about what I would put in my body were a couple things. Uh, one being just researching what's in our foods and what's in our drinks, because it's honestly just insane. What they put into our foods and drinks, just the ingredient list. All you gotta mm -hmm. do is go in the store on any mm -hmm. aisle yeah. for the most part. And you can literally just look at the back of anything. Like you can take salad dressing and look at the back of that and see there's probably 40 ingredients, if not more, 40 plus ingredients. And a lot of them you can't even pronounce at all. So just knowing chemicals. that, the fact that there's yeah, so many ingredients, so many chemical ingredients at that, and then you can't pronounce the grand majority of them. Mm -hmm. Like that alone should tell you if you can't even pronounce it. I mean, certain ones might be not too harmful, but for the most part, if you can't pronounce an ingredient, you probably should not be putting it in your body. And then when there's so many of them, I mean, you can just bet and bank on that it's gonna really take a toll on your health, especially over several months and several years. And so really just researching that and then the effects mm -hmm. of what certain ones have on our bodies. Like MSG, for example, monosodium glutamine, that is cancerous for long-term consumption. Mm -hmm. And so I researched that, I'm like, oh my God, because <laughs> I, would, I would eat a lot of, or take in a lot of MSG and mm -hmm. a lot of my salt, and seasonings mm -hmm. that I would put on my, you know, chicken mm -hmm. and steak even when I would have that. And I'm like, man, I can't, <laughs> I can't be doing that. I can't be doing that. Mm -hmm. That's not, it's not a good, not a good thing for my body. I got to treat my body right. Cause I live with my mm -hmm. body every day. So I got to take care of it. And so that's what I started realizing. I'm like, man, and that's probably why I'm not so focused. It's probably why I have some ADHD because I was actually diagnosed with ADHD as a kid. Because I would eat and consume a lot of candies too. That's that's another thing. And a lot of these artificial dyes and artificial colors tend to lead mm -hmm. to certain, you know, mental health and other disorders such as ADHD mm -hmm. and other, you know, things like anxiety. 
So I, I found that out too, that a lot of the stuff in America, we have that in our candies and uh, sugars. And that leads to a lot of what people get with ADHD and anxiety and et cetera. It, the list goes on and on. But just knowing ama- that and the correlation. Actually, I, I just want to interrupt you a second and say it's amazing yeah. how in other countries – they wouldn't even put half the ingredients that we allow in food in America. It's so weird. You would think it'd be the other way around, right? Uh, that these countries that have less economy and less money, that they would, you know, do more of that kind of fast food, processed food stuff, but they actually yep. do less of it than the United States. It's interesting. It is, it is. And it's crazy. We're one of the most developed countries, but then we do so many things. I hate to say it, but we do so many things backwards, such as that, just such as that alone. And that's, Mm -hmm. that's really what's caused a lot of the people to, you know, have negative Mm -hmm. health consequences. So I found that out. I'm like, man, I can't, I can't be putting that in my body. I can't be consuming that. That's not good for me. It's not good for me at all. And everyone else around me, I I felt sorry for people that would just not... (laughs) A lot of the times, I mean, some people just do it because they don't care. But a lot of the people I would, I'm going to admit, you know, they consume whatever they want because they're not always sure of what's in their foods because they don't really take the time to actually research it because they're always go, go, go. And that's what, uh, that's what makes, you know, the lifestyle here in America pretty bad too, because we're always on the go usually. So we're built on convenience and that's what our food is. And water and, and drinks are built on too. Just what we consume is built on convenience. And yeah, that's why we have so many preservatives. So it can mm-hmm. extend the lifespan of each thing on the shelf. And yeah, I found that, man, we can't be doing that. So really just being more aware of what you're eating, what you're drinking. And before that, what you're even buying at the store. Like that's, mm-hmm. that's, that's huge. <laughs> it's huge. Very important. Mm-hmm. And then honestly, beyond that too... Another thing that really, you know, inspired me to change and just turn a whole new leaf from where I was to where I am now with like everything I'm doing with what I'm eating, what I'm drinking. Honestly, it was one of the uh, people in my family, my my grandpa, actually. So he was one that I was really, really close to. I was very close to him. We, you know, we were really, really uh, similar in a lot of things, you know. I grew up on, it's funny, I grew up on Thomas the Tank Engine. He was a huge, huge uh, car fanatic, and he also loved trains. And I would always go in his basement, and he would have a lot of train models, like toy train models. And it was really fascinating. I I always thought it was really cool. And that was one huge uh, similarity that we had. Mm -hmm. And that's Mm -hmm. what we had in common a lot. And so, yeah, I would always go, (laughs) go to his place, watch Thomas the Tank Engine, and really just... Uh, chill out. And I always felt a really good, you know, presence. Some people would say vibe, just a really good energy around my grandpa every time that we would get together. And honestly, yeah, just hang out. And we would always meet around Branson, Missouri to even go to Silver Dollar City. I go to the Dixie Stampede. Some people that don't know what that is, it's the Southern part of Missouri. And that's where a lot of people go uh, to, to celebrate on holidays, especially. But yeah, we would always meet up there uh, because he's actually from Wisconsin Mm -hmm. and that's where we would meet. It's a bit of a drive for him, but, but yeah, it was great. It was great catching up, uh, great meeting him and when he was around, but that's the thing, like what happened, what happened was my mom actually got a call from one of her brothers and he obviously was the uh, sons of my grandpa. Mm -hmm. And so Mm -hmm. he got the news, obviously it was very sudden, very random, like it would happen for most people, Mm. but we just got the news that, yeah, he passed away and yeah, Yeah. it it really, honestly, I didn't know about it right away, but he told my mom and then my mom told me. And then after that, it, it shocked me. It shocked me before anything. And I was, I was taken aback and like, wait, what that, what did I just hear? Like, did I, did I really hear that? Right. Mm. So yeah, I heard that <laughs> it really took a toll on me to say the least. And then, you know, shortly thereafter, it did put me in a dark place, you know, a huge dark depression for quite some time. I was in a really dark place. And so after that, I just, <laughs> it was hard to even want to be motivated to work out. I will say I still was working out then, probably not nearly as hard as I was before, 
because that did really hit me hard mentally. Uh, but then really after all that, eventually we went over to the uh, funeral. We went over to the funeral. It was, I believe, a month out from when we got the news, roughly. But we went out to the funeral. And this it's crazy. This happened when I was 20. I'm 26 now. So about six years ago already. But we went to the funeral. We got together. And I held myself together pretty good emotionally for quite some time. But honestly, it was towards the end of the funeral that whenever they were closing it out, I just broke down and cried. It was It was a rough, rough time for me. And that's something that I'll never forget. But honestly, while that was very, very difficult for me to deal with mentally and really emotionally, especially it actually, I would say a month later, it, you know, lit a fire inside of me mm -hmm. to not want to go down the same path that he did. And honestly, cause he was a sugar addict. Yeah. He was a sugar addict and I didn't want to have that same lifestyle because I was a sugar addict myself and the sugar was actually one of those things that caused the cancer for him. That was one of the key driving factors and forces. And so when I found that out and when I realized I I'm a sugar addict too, I'm like, okay, I'm working out. I'm doing that consistently. I'm doing that right. But my diet, my, my health, it's not in check as far as what I'm eating. Like I'm not even caring about what I'm putting in my body and I'm seeing the long-term effects of it and the, the negative effects. And I'm just realizing if that, if that happens to him, that can happen to anyone. Literally, he's my grandpa. I don't want to, I don't want to share the same fate. I don't want to go down that same road, that same path. And after I realized that and found that out, I, I just made a change. I made a 180 mm -hmm. and I'm like, I got to change people's lives. I got to change my life first. Mm -hmm. I got to better my health and I don't want to go down that path. I got to better my health because health is wealth. And then after I started doing that, I started feeling better. Like right away, it was really difficult because trying to adjust your, you know, eating habits to from unhealthy to healthy can be rather difficult. Mm -hmm. Trying to get away from sugar can be very difficult because sugar is very addicting. It's like a drug in its own right. Because when you have sugar, and I believe it's even more addicting than some of the heavy drugs, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. But literally, when you have sugar, it is, it is hard to get away from, like to say the least. So what I had to do was I weaned myself off of it. I would have the amount of sugar I would have, but I would start cutting it in fourths by the grams. So instead of, let's say, 40 grams of sugar a day, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. really add more than that, <laughs> probably add like 80 to 100 grams of sugar a day. Instead mm -hmm. of doing that, I would cut it in fourths and I would just keep tapering myself off until eventually I don't even really have sugar anymore. The only sugar I really have is natural sugar found in fruits, mm -hmm. vegetables, mm -hmm. things like that, which is totally fine. Fructose yeah. is a lot yeah. better. Uh, sucrose, not so much, mm -hmm. but a little bit of added sugar is not going to hurt you, but keeping it to a very, very small minimum I found is, is best. If not even cutting it out completely. Yeah. But yeah, that's what I had to do. I just started tapering myself off of sugar and eventually I just, yeah, I don't really have sugar anymore and I feel so much better. I feel more confident. I just, I feel more energetic. I don't feel so sluggish. And I just know I have that certainty that I'm going to be better and healthier for the long term. And so after that, I just got a rush of energy. And then I wanted to share that same lifestyle with other people because I didn't want them to go down the same path of my grandpa either. Yeah, I you know, and death death is a uh, is a big thing, um, and you know, as you get older, you have to deal with it more and more and more as you get older because this is just the continuum of life how it happens, and how we deal with that, you know, it's different, you know, for everybody and based upon the relationship and the situation. So this kind of quick thing that happened that you had no idea about all of a sudden it's just alive and then dead uh you know it, it's a lot it's a lot to uh it's a lot it's a shock to the system uh you know a good friend of mine um whose name was also eddie he was a great cook and um uh, he was complaining about his stomach i didn't know but he, i found out later he was complaining about his stomach bothering him for like a couple of months and finally one day he just passed out from the pain while he was working and when they took him to the hospital they did you know they immediately cut him open at some point because they realized 
you know, he was having a problem and they did some scan or something and they, he had so much tumors. It was just oh, like, wow. it was just inoperable. It was like, there's so many tumors now that there was nothing they could do. And he died two weeks later. Um, so taking care of our health and trying to stay on top of that over time, listening to my body to, to understand that my body gives me signals when there's something wrong. Like, you know, you, you have to investigate and figure this yeah. stuff out because, you know, I don't want to end up in a situation that I find out, you know, 10 years from now that I've had this ongoing condition that's been going on for a long time that I didn't do nothing about. Um, and I, and I'm, I'm lucky that, uh, you know, I'm blessed really that I've been able to do things that had an impact on my health. Like, you know, you're talking about you did some things and you had a great impact on your health. You felt the benefits of it. You had more energy, uh, you know. Um, but I mean, I've done things to eliminate disease uh, or at least to eliminate the, the possibility of that disease affecting me. Right. Uh, I can hold it at bay, maybe. And I believe that there's there's a lot of data that shows there's a great mind body connection to all these things. So working on the mind, like you often talk about mindset and, you know, focus and, and what we're going to focus our attention on actually also helps my physical you know, health because of that. It's, it's absolutely incredible. I, I just want to go back for one second because. Um, you know, I have been eating, I, I don't do things perfectly. I, I purposely don't do things perfectly. And it has to do with something I read back in the uh, early 90s, um, that the way my brain works, if I tell my brain I can't eat lamb anymore, because I love lamb, I, I love lamb. So yeah. if I tell my brain I can't eat lamb anymore, like I have a, a, a fight going on and and i'm like what are you talking about i love lamb I, what do you mean i can't eat you know but if you say you're going to have lamb but you're only going to have it once in a while you know you're not going to eat it all the time you know this is something that i can manage right so I, i've always believed you know i've been working and just eating non-processed foods i eat fresh fruits and vegetables and you know no, non-chemical non-gmo you know meats and stuff and and actually Oftentimes, um, I actually have uh, kind of like a uh, pescatarian uh, diet, uh, and I'll do you know only fish. But then every once in a while, I go back and I'll just eat meat for a while. And right now, I'm in my meat eating days for the last six months. But but anyhow, I'm sorry to to go off topic. But my point is, is just that uh, you know eating fresh vegetables and fresh fruit and fresh foods and not processed foods and not chemicals. And then, like you were talking about the liquid. You know, being careful what you're taking in a liquid because sometimes, you know, corn syrup and all these other things and chemicals that are in there, uh, you know, could cause uh, health problems and issues. Um, one thing we didn't talk about within all that and that I'm interested in is addiction. So you, you kind of touched on it about addiction for sugar. Uh, but, you know, you've got caffeine, nicotine. And, and these other things, um, energy drinks and all this stuff that many times people are just addicted to having energy drinks all day. Um, oh, yeah. And, and I'm, I'm not sure what damage that does to us. Yeah. Yeah, energy drinks. That's the thing. A lot of people want to have caffeine. They want to have energy because, you know, life can get really hectic. It can get really, really busy, to say the least. Mm -hmm. And when your energy is not there and your energy is not on par and up to point, it can be very difficult to combat how busy your you know schedule or lifestyle might be. So mm -hmm. that's why a lot of people have energy, and I know I understand why a lot of people turn to energy drinks. But I will say it's not it's not healthy, and not to say caffeine in itself is all bad because in moderate, mm -hmm. smaller amounts, it's totally mm -hmm. fine. Now you don't have to have caffeine to get energy. There are other ways. But I'll admit, caffeine is one of the easiest, quickest ways to, you know, get energy. Mm -hmm. I'll admit, though, if you're going to have caffeine, stay away from energy drinks. Because most energy drinks, like Monster and Red Bull being two notorious ones, they have a lot of caffeine. Like, it's insane. <laughs> Literally, just mm -hmm. one serving of the whole thing, it's 300 milligrams minimum. Mm -hmm. And I think certain ones even have a little more. But it's typically mm -hmm. about 300 milligrams of caffeine. And at that point, and that's on top of that, the taurine or whatever. Yeah, right? yeah. There's there's all these crazy things that they put in, you know, steroids on on certain ones, and then mm. all these just 
crazy amounts, just this crazy amount of caffeine because 300 milligrams, even for someone that's bigger, that's taller and that's um, older, it's still going to affect you negatively. And especially over time, because that's just not especially good for your from the heart. crash. Yes. And the crash too. That's yeah. another thing. When you're so amped up, you might feel so, you know, energized and maybe even good in that moment. But then for certain people, especially if your tolerance to caffeine is not that good, you can actually find yourself sick, possibly mm-hmm. throwing up and feeling like you're going to actually have a heart attack. So when you're having that much caffeine, that much, that quick, that's, that's going to really affect a lot of people. Even mm-hmm. if you're pretty tolerant to caffeine, it's just not something you're wanting to do for your overall health, especially day on and day in and day out. Cause when someone does that consistently, it's really going to take a toll on your heart. And then, yeah, the crash, like you were just mentioning when someone's so energized, they might feel good then for certain people, but then later you're going to feel like you have no energy because you had mm-hmm. all this energy and then it's just like, it's gone. <laughs> and then you feel like you can't do a thing. Like you're, totally depleted. So what I found the best thing to do is if you're going to have, you know, caffeine or energy from said caffeine, I recommend just taking a, you know, pre-workout, a natural pre-workout. If you're wanting to do that for working out, or if you just want energy in general, just for anything, really just one or two cups, one or two small cups of black coffee, that'll get the job done. Cause that that's more natural. And then also too, it doesn't have all these additives in it. And it's also going to not be too much, you know, caffeine at once. So anywhere from one to two cups. I have a tea that I like. It's a caffeinated tea. Um, And every morning I just have a a cup of tea and that's it. Um, I I, I find actually, you know, I've been um, intermittent fasting for the last, I don't know, 10 years. Uh, And and what I do is I juice, actually. So, like, I'll get a vegetable juice and a fruit juice that I'll make in the machine, and I freeze them. And then, you know, they're only good for, like, three days or something. But, you know, I have this process that I do. And then I'll drink a fruit juice, I'll drink a vegetable juice, and then I'll think uh, drink, like, a beet juice, you know, during my fasting. Um, You know, and so I I end up having, like, an 18-hour fast every day. And that gives me massive energy. I mean, yeah. from the time I wake up. So uh, it's very interesting. I, I didn't really realize the benefits that I would get on top of that. I mean, I was doing it for other reasons, longevity and, you know, health-related stuff. And because I, I for some reason, if, if you don't eat, I, I can work more and work more focused not eating. It's like yeah. eat, the eating ritual, like it doesn't really work for me. In, in a busy day, maybe just picking on something, but not really sitting down and eating and having a lunch. Then I feel tired, you know, yep. uh, afterwards, especially if you eat, you know, certain things. But um, I, I find that, you know, doing these things really help me and keep me in a, in a really good system. And then the longevity stuff is really why I do it because of the body's ability to get into that healing mode and, oh, yeah. and take care of itself and, uh, you know, rejuvenate. Yeah. 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 Intermittent fasting, it's, it's one of the most underrated things. You know, a lot of people don't really give it its attention and its recognition that it really does Mm -hmm. does deserve because intermittent fasting, yeah, it does increase your energy levels. It puts you in that state known as ketosis and it just makes it a Mm -hmm. lot easier to stay focused, concentrated, and Mm -hmm. honestly, just more disciplined and motivated to get the job done, whatever you might be doing. Yeah, yeah. And I was told from the beginning, I don't know where I read this, probably it was somebody big in the space, um, you know, said something about a minimum 16 hours, like you have to do at least a minimum of 16 hours, you got to make it to that 16 hours. Uh, I do 18, you know, uh, I have a good friend who does 20. So, nice. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, we sometimes try to compete with each other. <laughs> that's good. That's good. A little friendly competition. Yeah. So tell me a little bit more about how you develop this stuff for your clients. So, you know, you're helping clients to burn fat and lose weight, maybe have more mobility in their life, some more flexibility. So how do you put this all into a program? How does, how does that work? Yeah, for sure. So what I usually do, I'll sit on a consultation call with them and I'll just make sure that I can figure out more about them you know, their daily life, their goals, everything they've tried, what's worked, what maybe not has quite worked. And then just all the roadblocks, all the struggles that have been keeping them 
from those goals that they're running, uh, wanting to achieve, whether it's gaining muscle, burning fat, improving their flexibility and mobility, or maybe even a combination thereof. So I really just dial that in. And when I figure that out, I just put together a customized plan. And then, yeah, I just do another call with them to discuss mm -hmm. how I can help them with that mm -hmm. plan. What about the diet? How do you, uh, like, I, you know, sometimes I know uh, guys in your space, they um, add nutrition into there. Uh, some of them have uh, outsourced it to another company and you just yeah. basically eat all your meals prepared and, and whatnot so you don't even have to think about it. Um, how do you work with the nutrition and uh, the food plan? Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, I always fully customize it to their fitness goals and what they like to eat. And obviously take out anything they don't like to eat and even especially food allergies. I'll take all that out, anything mm -hmm. they're allergic to. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I build it around their schedule as well. So mm -hmm. I'll just use uh, a software to help put together their meals and their meal plan and just fully customize it to them. Mm -hmm. So I'll make sure that they're getting enough calories and for the whole day and then enough protein, enough uh, fats and carbs to fit those calories, mm -hmm. those overall calories. And then after that, I just make sure that each meal is not too big, but big enough for that serving. Mm -hmm. And then also make sure that they're eating enough throughout the day and that it's a balanced, you know, set of calories throughout the day. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes I'll do three meals. Sometimes I'll do six meals, just depending mm -hmm. on their schedule and what they're wanting to achieve. Mm. Uh, what about things like uh, if they have... Uh, health problems or anything do you go over medical histories or if they have any like you said you work with somebody who had diabetes so his yeah. obviously his diet's going to need to be a little bit different yep right for sure yeah what i'll typically do is i'll find out more about that when i first talk to him on the consultation maybe even in text before i even mm -hmm. get on a call then more on the consultation and then when i discuss how then i'll go over that and typically what I'll do is if they're diabetic, I'll of course keep their sugars lower and then increase their mm -hmm. fat intake to compensate for that. And then make mm -hmm. sure their protein's about at least moderate, you know, amount of protein, maybe a little higher if that's cool with them, but at least moderate amount of protein, higher fat and lower carb at that what, point. What's a, what's a moderate amount of protein for a 200 pound guy? Yeah, so typically I would say minimum is about 0.8 grams per pound of their body weight. That's what I try to do, minimum that. Um, I mean, I could go a little lower, but typically it's about 0.8 grams per pound of their body weight that mm -hmm. I always try to shoot for. So, so it's how, not, many, how many grams of protein is that for 200? I'm, I don't have a calculator. Should I ta do it? Yeah, yeah, you can, do, you can put it in. Because <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand it by 0.8 grams so 0.8 grams times 200 pounds is 160 grams yeah that's that's about what i'll do for someone that's 200 pounds and so 160 grams if let's say it was something like chicken right each piece of chicken has uh each ounce of chicken has what approximately oh for each for every four ounces or every one ounce yeah okay every four ounces is what? Uh, about 25 to 26 grams yep so 160 divided by 25 is six. So six ounces of uh, meat a day or pr six ounces, of six servings of protein. Yep. Okay. Cool. Oh, yeah. That's good. Sometimes I, I, I think um, I, I have to watch my protein intake because uh, too much protein has a different effect on me because I have – uh, historical family genetics of kidney disease and you know I could see when they oh, yeah. do my test that I have the beginnings of it that I got to watch it and take care of it so uh, so I, I, I actually um, I actually don't use all the protein my body gets my body I spill protein in my urine it's just the kidneys are not working to to absorb all that so it spills it out so I have to be careful with that yeah oh yeah yeah definitely when you have those conditions uh, specifically with those, you definitely want to keep your protein lower in that case. Mm -hmm. Is it typically like, you know, tracking macros, right? Are we, are we going to be looking at the macros here? Yeah, that's what I usually do. Certain mm -hmm. people just count strictly calories, which technically you can if you're getting enough calories in. Mm -hmm. The only issue mm -hmm. I found with that personally and with the clients that I've had that used to do that is if you do that, 
yes, you'll get the calories in, but you're not always going to get the quality of calories in because mm -hmm. the macros add up to your overall calories as they are. Mm -hmm. So proteins, your fats and your, uh, your carbs essentially. Mm -hmm. So protein, you know, every gram of protein has four calories, mm -hmm. same with carbs. And then for every gram of fat has nine calories. So mm -hmm. when you add all that in together, that's going to add up to your overall calories. So I always mm -hmm. recommend counting and tracking your macros. And when you do that, you know how much of your calories you're getting of each thing. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. So moving, moving past, you know, we, we go over nutrition. We, we develop a good food plan of how you're going to structure it that's going to fit in your day with foods you like and no foods you don't like based upon the schedule and any medical issues that you have that, that you bring up. Now we go into actually starting some kind of routine, how do you work with people in, in getting this new routine in their life and starting these new habits? Yeah, for sure. So I always uh, tell them first and foremost, it's progress over perfection. Don't expect, you know, instant results. Also don't expect to immediately be conditioned. Honestly, don't, yeah. don't expect to be immediately, you know, in this new lifestyle. It's going to take time yeah. to get into it and get acclimated to it. So it's not going to be just something that you're going to do and get into overnight by any means. But when yeah. you do, it's going to be a lot better. You're going to feel a lot better and you're going to feel a lot more energetic. So how I keep them uh, on the course to you doing that and get them into that routine is I'll have them just start small and start gradual. So depending on their fitness level, we'll determine the exercises and workouts that I give them for that week for each day. And then usually what I'll do for beginners and people that are just transitioning into this new healthy fit lifestyle, I'll typically have them work out at least three days a week. That way they can just start out small and typically nothing too much more than 30 minutes, you know, for each workout. That way it's not taking all day and they're not taking all week just to work out and it's getting themselves into a routine. And once they start establishing that routine, they start feeling better. And it, it makes it hard to say no. It makes it hard to not want to work out. And they start feeling the benefits, the positive changes and effects of those workouts. And then also to you, the healthier diet, like I've had some clients, they get, a, you know, some blood work back. They see their blood work and they, they notice like mm -hmm. the amazing, amazing yeah. changes that they've seen on the results. Because yeah. one of my clients, he actually has, one, a, you know, a pretty bad condition with his health, with diabetes. He actually looked at his blood work and he found that his new blood work that he just got about a couple weeks ago, in fact, it actually hasn't been that good, he said, since he was a kid. So I was like, whoa. And he's like in his, believe it, yeah, about mid 50s. So I'm like, wow, that is, that's crazy. That, that is, that is. And really then, you impressive. know, once you start doing it and you start feeling better and you start seeing results, then you just want to take better care of yourself. You know, one thing that I, that I have a, I don't really understand how to communicate effectively to certain individuals that um, I work with sometimes that I want to help <laughs> and, yeah. you know, where they're doing massive weightlifting and trying to build this massive physique, um, but they're not cutting fat. They're not. Right. They're, they're, they're eating more, much more than, than maybe is really necessary to maintain what they're doing. Um, and they just believe that that's the way to do it to, to build big muscle and, and everything. But meanwhile, they've got a gut. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. and they've got fat on their body. And I just don't understand. Like, I thought the purpose is to not just build muscle. But right. to 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 burn fat and you know have a more physical cut body that's sure. well defined rather than just having big arms and big legs. Yeah. So yeah, how, how do you help people like that? For sure, building muscle. I'll, I'll tell them building muscle and strength is very important, especially if that's one of your primary goals. And if you want to have that look, that physique, totally fine. If that's what your ideal physique is to you. But I will say for your overall health, you don't have to be like having a six pack or an eight pack. That's, that's not necessary. It's, it's cool. It's fine. If you want it. I mean, Hey, I, I, I vouch for that for people. It's, it's a great look, but if you're just wanting to be healthy, I do recommend, yeah, for all those people that are like that, 
to keep the muscle and the strength, but also focus on cutting off, you know, some of the body fat. Because obviously you need some body fat to live and survive and function properly, but you don't really want to be too much past if you're, it, you know, it varies if you're a guy or a girl, but if you're a guy, you don't want to be much above, you know, 15% body fat. Uh, you definitely want to be, I'd say 12 to 15 is a good moderate range. It's not too low. It's not too high either. So anywhere from 12 to 15% body fat, if they're above that, I encourage everyone in that situation to start cutting down. Mm -hmm. Now you can keep your muscle and cut down. I mean, you're going to lose a little bit when you start cutting mm -hmm. the fat realistically, but you can keep a lot of it by keeping your protein higher than lower. And then also making sure that you're still doing strength training that's challenging your muscles enough. Mm -hmm. So it keeps them, you know, from mm -hmm. shrinking. And then also to making sure you're doing enough, you know, either cardio or enough intense workouts where you can do maybe circuit training that can actually be cardio in itself. So doing circuit mm -hmm. training with your weights and just going from one exercise to the next with minimal rest and only resting really at the end of each round. So you could do like a full body circuit with weights and then just rest for maybe a minute, minute and a half, and then just go right back to it. That's so one like, great way. Like the circuit of like, you know, we're going to work on the calves, eyes, you know, uh, the arms, you know, whatever, yep. you know, your back, whatever. You'd go through the whole routine of, of all of it, and then you take a break for a minute or two, and then maybe go through it all again. Yep. And doing that for at least three rounds, I found is very effective. Mm. And doing that three days a week, you don't really got to do any more than three days for circuits because it's so intense and you do need mm. to rest and obviously recover too. But three days a week, full body of circuits, that's a great way to cut body fat. And you can keep your muscle mass still doing that. You just got to make sure your protein's high enough. Your protein's high enough to maintain that muscle mass, that harder mm. muscle. So we don't want to, mm -hmm. we don't want to lose that muscle. <laughs> mm. But yeah, that's what I'll usually approach them with. Just have them understand that muscle mass and strength is important. And you want to keep that, especially if that was one of your pri uh, primary goals. But you want to focus if you're high enough on the body fat, you know, scale, you want to make sure to start cutting down, you know, a lot of that body fat. Now you don't have to get again to a six pack, eight pack, but at least just enough where you can see a little definition yeah. in, you know, in your stomach, in your chest, just your body. So that way you can still be aesthetically looking, you know, good for yourself, but also feel a lot leaner, but not too lean. And that way you're still going to be pretty big and muscular. So you're not sacrificing gains or anything. You're just improving your overall physique. Mm -hmm. And that's what I try to encourage those people to, you know, to have for their physique. That's one of the best things you can do. Unless you're just training purely for strength, you can be as big as you want to be. But for most people, I encourage them to keep their strength and muscle, but cut the body fat down mm -hmm. if they're high enough in body fat. So typically, again, above 15%. Now, I know, uh, Roman, that you also help people with their mindset and uh, helping them to gain these new habits and new structures in their lives and actually make them fit into their lives and make them workable. How do you help people with the mindset and uh, building these routines and making them part of their lives? Yeah. Yeah. So mindset's everything. Mindset's super important. If you don't have your mindset right, you're not going to have anything else right in your mm -hmm. life, fitness related or not fitness related. So what I have them do is to keep themselves motivated and actually get right into the routine a lot easier, especially if they feel like they're wanting to quit when they're already just trying to get into it. I would recommend them doing this, just remembering why they started to begin with. So remembering why you started the journey that's everything like that is huge when you actually pinpoint your why in anything in life, but especially in your fitness journey, that's going to make it a lot easier and basically impossible to want to quit. And then also I found very effectively this, uh, I found what is also very effective is when you can actually analyze what's going to happen if I don't do this, what's going to happen if I don't work towards losing the 20 maybe the 40 or 50 pounds, what, what's going to happen to my health? What am I going to look like? What am I going to mm -hmm. feel like asking yourself those questions and doing that reverse psychology that can actually keep you more grounded and focused on your fitness goals and your fitness journey of losing that weight 
or gaining that muscle, whatever it is. But it really does help, especially those people that want to lose that weight. And that's going to make it hard yeah. for them to not, you know, keep going. Yeah, I mean, uh, I understand 100% that if, for example, you um, want to wear a bikini in the summer and now it's winter time and you like want to drop 10, 20 pounds so that, you know, you could look better in your bikini, you have a, a goal, you have a date and you have this vision of where you want to be. And so you want to keep working towards that. Absolutely. That, that's, a, that's a real good driver, especially when it comes internally like, you know, this is for me, this is what I want, this is, you know, the the reaction I need. But but also, though, <clears throat> what concerns me personally, and, and you know, I see in, in others, is that life is a big part of what you've got to really take a look at. You've got to take a look at your individual life, what you actually do with your time, how you react to the world around you. Um, are, are you stuck in negative patterns are you stuck in dysfunctional loops i mean these things all affect you right so that uh, i mean commonly if i get depressed in some situation if some things are getting me down for some reason uh, i tend to want to eat more comfort food and i yeah. and i and, and i want to eat to be comforted um so i so if i don't work on not living a depressive frustrated angry lifestyle then you know i i don't trigger that in me you know what i mean so there's maybe some sif serious things that i need to take care of in my life like for again for example if you're around people that annoy the shit out of you and don't appreciate yeah. you you need to change those people because they're just going to keep annoying the shit out of you it's not going to change exactly um if there's something that you do or or, or you know individually that we do that doesn't really fit in line with our belief system, but we keep doing this other thing. Like we have to change that. Otherwise it's going to keep reinforcing the negative. Right. So I, I think that really looking at that and looking at you know, in, in health, uh, finances, vocation, relationships, time and money, freedom, and you know, these different areas, like where are we really at? Cause each thing, you know, influences the other, right? hundred percent. And yeah, just owning your space too and really controlling your circle with who's mm -hmm. around you because that mm -hmm. can play a huge pivotal part in your life and whatever you're mm -hmm. doing, you know, business related, uh, career related, personal or fitness related, like in all areas of your life, you got to make sure that you control your circle because mm -hmm. yeah, people will come into your life sometimes with, you know, you don't, you may not expect these people to come mm -hmm. into your life all the time, but mm -hmm. you can still control you know, who's going to be in your life for the long term. And mm -hmm. so when you take that power for yourself and you control that, you can actually dictate, you know, who's going to affect you negatively or positively. So that's, that's, that's very important for sure. Yeah. yeah. And if you are living a life where you feel defeated, you feel uh, victimized, you feel like no matter what you do, things just don't work out. I mean, you know, this is a terrible place to live in. Like we don't need to live there. And so we need to start changing that messaging and changing the thought process and, and, and doing the mindset, uh, you know, and taking care of ourselves physically. Uh, I, I like very much that you also find the expectations for people to understand that you're not expecting them to go from zero to a hundred the next day. Like right. you understand, like you're going to ease into this, you know, um, I was reading a story and the, uh, it's interesting how the mind works, right? So like you actually can trick yourself into doing things, even though for some reason you don't want to, right? Even though maybe you're not motivated by it. Um, but like I was reading this one guy, he just made a stupid goal. I mean, it's just a ridiculous goal to just go to the gym for one minute, and he would just go there, stay for one minute and leave. And after he did that a few times, then he was like, well, I guess I'm here already. I might as well just stay for a little while and do stuff. So maybe then he stood for five minutes and then maybe he stood for 10 minutes. And the next thing you know, he's going three times a week, staying there for a half hour, hour, doing his routines, <laughs> you know, and yeah. but it all started because he just said, I'm just going to go to the gym three days a week for one minute. You know, and, and that was how he tricked himself into just starting the habit. So I, I think that there's a lot of cool things that we can yeah. do in regard to that. 
Oh yeah. And de depending on the person, certain people will actually get into a routine in different ways. Some a lot easier and some not so easy, but with certain people, they have to really just adjust themselves to it. Like you were just saying about that one guy. So it, it definitely takes a lot of time for certain people, but Hey, I mean, whatever motivates that person by all means, yeah, I always think, you know, for myself, uh, you know, and, and for others, I always feel like, you know, so it, you're on a journey. Uh, the journey is important to you. Uh, it's aligned with your principles, your values, and your ideals. And if it took you five years or 10 years to get to where you want to go, is that still not a worthy pursuit? Like, you know, you just got to keep going and you got to just keep, you know, doing what you can and do the best you can do. And I always like Zig Ziglar's uh, analogy uh, about so you go out and you walk a block and a mailbox and the next day you go out and you walk a block and two mailboxes then you do three mailbox and you just keep doing it so the next thing you know you're running uh, you know three miles a day five miles a day so it's 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 it's, a, it's increases and I really am a big proponent of little wins and oh, yeah. celebrating the little wins so I went an extra ten feet I went an extra. 20 feet, you know, so uh, th those things help me to keep in the process and wanting to push a little more and go a little bit more. I mean, I remember reading this guy, he suffered from depression often. Um, and he would like feel like he couldn't do anything. He didn't want to do anything. And he would force himself to go outside and he would just say, I'm just going to go outside. And I'm just going to walk 10 steps. But then he would walk the 10 steps, he would focus on his breathing, and he'd be like, okay, let me see if I can walk another 10, and he'd walk another 10. And the next thing you know, he's he's walking a half a mile and starting to feel better now that he's moving and the activity's happening. Because there's so much, there's so much, uh, there's like a magic in just movement. There's some oh, yeah. magic that happens in movement that I like, that when I'm feeling like I'm stuck somewhere, I just start moving. I just start moving. I don't care what I'm doing. I'm just moving. I'm going to move here, move there, try this, try that. I'm just going to keep doing that. And suddenly, like, things start to work out. It's, oh, it's yeah. very interesting. Compound effect. Compound yeah. effect. Yeah. So, Roman, I really appreciated uh, your time that you spent with me talking about your program and, and how you help people achieve their goals of fitness and better health. Um, is there anything that I haven't asked you about that, that you wanted to talk about? Let me see. Let me see. So I, I will say this. Uh, another thing I would like to mention is, you know, motivation and consistency. They're two uh, similar things, but they are a little different in their own right. So a lot of people, when they're trying to get started on something, especially we'll say in fitness, for example, mm -hmm. if, let's just say they're trying to lose the 20 pounds in a few months. Mm -hmm. So they'll try to get motivated to do that which is very important. You know, motivation is key. Mm -hmm. It's very essential. You got to, you got to get that fire inside of you yeah. to want us to get started and uh, going towards that goal and achieving that goal. But a lot of the times people fall off because that motivation kind of, you know, flickers in and out and the fire starts, you know, burning out. Mm -hmm. And so you want to have the motivation, but the moment that happens, the problem is people don't have consistency or discipline to back it up. So if you don't have anything outside or anything from the exterior mm. to back up what, you know, is in here, the interior, then you're not going to stay the course and you're going to fall off and then you're just going to keep doing this mm. or you might do this. So having that consistency and discipline is going to help you win long term. That's just something I wanted to share because a lot of the people that I know and myself in the past, including I would literally get motivated and pumped and hyped about something. And the moment one thing would go wrong, I would <laughs> I would just hit rock bottom or at the very mm -hmm. least, I would go down in my feelings. You know, I wouldn't really be as motivated. I just would not have the drive, the fire and just the overall energy to want to keep pushing forward. But then when I realized, man, that's not good, I got to get something to keep myself, even when I'm not feeling the greatest on a certain day. I got to get some kind of, you know, discipline, consistency to keep myself going, to keep myself grounded. Mm -hmm. And when I realized that, that made it a lot easier to stay the course when I read up just an action plan, a game plan and a strategy for what I'm going to do each day, instead of just having the motivation to want to do, you know, whatever goal that I'm trying to achieve, I actually had a game plan step by step on how I'm going to do that, for example. And that just helped me just a lot more in my journey 
when I was first getting into yeah. fitness. Too. Focusing, focusing on the process is, is what we're talking about, right? So it's like exactly. you know, instead of saying, I'm not motivated today to do anything, you're like, I have a process. It starts here, then you go to this step, then that step, then this step, and I'm just going to focus on the process. I'm not going to think about it. I'm just going to focus on the process. So, so that's uh, something that's beneficial uh, for you. Oh, yeah, yeah 100%. Yeah. Motivation is something very interesting. Uh, I've done a lot of research about motivation, as I'm sure you probably have. Um, and, you know, what I find is that uh, it's a little confusing, actually. And sometimes I find that this blanket term of motivation means so many different things to different people in different situations. Um, for me, what I find to be most useful is that there are roughly seven different ways that I can motivate myself in situations to win. Uh, I'm a winner. I like winning. I don't like losing, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, I, I understand that losing is part of life, right? You can't always win every time you sit down to play the game. Um, but I like to win, uh, and I like to focus on winning, uh, and I like to line things up so that I win. So yeah. I'm the kind of person that if I'm not going to win, then I don't want to play the game. <laughs> then let, right. okay let me play a different game right because he who makes the rules wins the game but um what i'm what i'm just alluding to is the fact that like for me i understand myself and i understand my internal engine inside of me and one of the things for example i'll just give you a couple examples that really help me to stay motivated is competition and yeah. uh and another one is like embarrassment so like if i tell you i'm gonna do it and this is what my goal is, and I'm going to focus on these things. I have to do it because I told you about it. I don't want to be embarrassed to come to the point that you asked me, so how's it going, Eddie? And I go, oh, yeah, I didn't do shit last week. <laughs> um, I, I, that's embarrassing to me, yeah. right? Because I want to be a man that says what he means, means what he says, and does what he says he's going to do. For sure. But the uh, but the competition thing is also very big for me. Like, uh, you know, I'm in sales and, you know, sales training and you know, training people all the time and building teams and, and whatnot and, you know, reaching goals. I find like I always have to get involved and I have to find out who is the best right now. Who's the best on the team? I'll actually say, so who's the best on the team right now? Great. Let me get in time check with them. And then I'm like, hey, buddy, I just wanted to meet you. That's really great. I know you're at the top of the board. That's fantastic. I know you have a history of being at the top of the board. I just want you to know I'm calling you out, babe. I'm calling you <laughs> out. I'm going to beat you. I just want you to know. You're going to be in my dust. This is what's going to happen. Are you down? Are you ready to go? Are we going to go head to head? And like I build that kind of relationship because I, I need that. That that motivates me to know that I'm fighting something and somebody and I want to beat them. That's like that competitive advantage inside of me. Like I, I really rely on that a lot. But there's others. There's other things that uh, that I find uh, are motivational, uh, you know, that that can push us. But that's for another time, but I just, I just think that um, we need to look at ourselves and look at in our history. You know, what are the things that actually push us and make us go more and do more? Like, you know, all of us have had situations in our life where we thought, "Oh my God, this is the end of the world," and somehow we pushed through and we got on the other side and we had a breakthrough. So, like, what was it that? made me want to go for that breakthrough what was it that i was relying on to get me there you know and and kind of tap into that i think that's really helpful oh yeah 100 percent. 100 percent. yeah so do you have community and accountability and, and that stuff kind of involved too right definitely yeah. yeah so what i always do with a lot of my all my clients really unless they're just wanting to strictly work out totally fine but for every client I just have them, yeah, I have them do a coaching call with me and we just go over just everything with their workouts mm -hmm. or meals, nutrition, how everything's going, their energy, their sleep, all the, yeah, just the whole nine yards. And I just keep them consistent, grounded and motivated with their mindset more than anything, but then with their fitness and their mm -hmm. physical as well. Cause yeah, yeah cause, the mindset governs all. Yeah. And I just think, you know, uh, in my experience, the idea of, 
like-minded people with similar values and ideas all trying to do something to better their lives you know being in that environment and communicating with those people like i need we need other people this is the thing is we need other humans like we are social creatures that's what we are and we can't just exist in a vacuum like i'm not going to just have great mindset and have a great coach and just go out there and crush everything without more feedback and support than that and so i i think you know community and you know accountability partnerships you know uh really are helpful to me oh know? yeah 100 yeah. percent. well listen man i appreciate you uh i'm gonna be in touch we're gonna keep communicating and uh, more will be revealed definitely definitely it's been a great conversation for more information and monthly topics of interest please go to transformyourfuture.com and join the newsletter